If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already. And with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 121 of the career mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We start with an incredible cup game against Arsenal. Genuinely, the most entertaining game, an end-to-end -end game that we've had so far in this career mode Road to Glory in all five seasons to this point. There are some transfer decisions to be made towards the latter stages of this episode as well, but we need to concentrate on this game right now because it really was an absolute cracker. Fielding a weakened side though against Arsenal in this, of course, first leg of two in the Capital One Cup semi-finals. Everton have beaten Manchester United in the first leg of their two in uh, the other side of the draw. I'm not really too sure whether it was the uh, a home leg or an away leg in their favour, but uh, Everton did come away with a 2-1 victory. We'd be quite happy with a similar scoreline in this one, so long as it was in our favour. But as you can see, Arsenal starting a very strong line-up. And like I say, we were having a bit of a weakened side. The fixture list, as you saw in the last episode, is ridiculously congested. And I'm just rotating players as best I can to more so have my most fit side out rather than uh, a side that is, uh, you know, the best when it comes to individual stats or ability but unfortunately we get off to a poorer start We're going 1-0 down there in the 39th minute the first half was a bit end-to-end -end, but not really too much happened and then the second half came to life as you can see Danny Welbeck involved again here missed one tackle on him and he's going to play it out wide here to Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain missed a tackle on him not really too sure how the defender was able to uh, actually end up on the floor there but Oxlade-Chamberlain then brushes past another challenge to put it into the back of the net to make it Arsenal 2 Cambridge United 0 and uh, things looked as if they were going very much Arsenal's way as we headed deeper into the second half. We get the ball inside here to Gabbiadini and he gets blocked off from it by Aaron Ramsey, I think he was, in, uh, in the box, just on the outside of the six-yard box. A clear-cut penalty, you'll see from the replay. Referee had no, no problems whatsoever in giving that one. There was no doubt in anyone's mind in the stadium, watching at home, anything. That is a clear obstruction. Down goes Gabbiadini, upsteps the... Uh, now injured or currently carrying a knock, uh, Cassida powers it into the top right-hand corner. My nerves went a little bit as uh, the goalkeeper went the right way, but straight to pick up the ball to try and get it back up the other end. Straight from kickoff, though, Arsenal fly up the other end, and it's Dusan Tadic dancing down the left-hand side. It's going to stand the cross up to the middle, and of all people to put it in the back of the net, Romelu Lukaku in an Arsenal shirt. Everton in the other half of the draw, but he's in this half of the draw playing for Arsenal. So immediately after we'd scored to bring it back to 2-1, they went and made it 3-1. So I thought, ah, game over. It really does look out of our hands right now. But then we get this free kick and we make it 3-2. Game on again in the 77th minute as they brought on Sanchez for Cazorla to try and freshen things up for them offensively. And then from kickoff again, they're going to go up the other end. Dusan Tadic into Danny Welbeck. Finds Romelu Lukaku about 30 yards out. Hits it first time. And how is that for a screamer? It was game over. Then it was game on again. Then it was game over. Then it was game on again as we made it 3-2. And now surely it's game over as Lukaku scores from 30 yards. They're trying to score a fifth here. Pushing a lot of men forward. But we're going to catch them on the counter attack. Here's Strahl Georgiev coming up towards the 90th minute. Twists and turns around Per Mertesacker. Rifles it into the back of the net. 89 minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. It's 4-3. Game on again. We're still in stoppage time at the end of the second half. We get a free kick here. Last chance saloon for us. Francisco Senorelli is going to play it short to Michael Woods. Around the corner to Georgiev. Shrugs off the challenge of the defender. Shows the presence of mind to square it to the back post. And Adarabio makes it Cambridge United 4 Arsenal 4 with two goals in stoppage time at the end of the game. We get a draw from this first leg. And this is only the first leg. We've still got to go to the Emirates and play them again. Ridiculous cup game. Absolutely outrageous. Unfortunately, there wasn't any transfer uh, action between uh, that game and the second game. There was only about two days between the two games, in fairness. So I didn't really have much time to get anything done. But uh, as you can see, it's first versus 11th in the league. We're obviously playing at home again. We recently played 9th place West Bromwich as you can see there came away with an okay result we got a draw in that one I think in uh, either yesterday's video or Wednesday's video I can't quite remember when uh, when it was 
Uh, it won't be yesterday's, was it? Because you'll be seeing this on Friday. So it will either have been Wednesdays or Mondays. But uh, I'm hoping for a decent result here against West Ham. Obviously at home again, playing my strongest side in this one. And uh, they've got Andy Carroll up top alongside uh, Maiga with uh, Ravel Morrison sat behind them. They're playing a rather adventurous 4-1-2-1-2 here away from home. Not the uh, strongest of sides from them, although obviously they uh, do have a lot of physicality in their team. So it might not be the strongest when it comes to uh, ability, but they are definitely the strongest when it comes to strength so uh, we're going to have to try and play it around them rather than playing through them in this particular game because we do have quite a few smaller players in our side not necessarily so physical but more technical so it's going to be a, a, an interesting game I was hoping it was perhaps going to be a little bit better defensively for us than in the first game in the episode was and Gruezo had the first chance and then the second and uh, the second one was definitely a lot better than the first first one went flying wide that one drew a good save out of the goalkeeper you can see we're definitely on top here Gruezo was running things in the middle involved again there Bayer goes for a crack from distance and that needed saving that was flying towards the top corner obviously saw Lukaku score a screamer in the last game and wanted to do something like that himself although unfortunately the goalkeeper had other ideas so we head into the second half still on top here Spaller cutting inside perhaps could have gone down there has the shot deflected by the defender and it goes over the top of the bar real let off for West Ham there they were really on their last legs defensively but they catch me on the counter-attack here Ravel Morrison into uh, Kasami plays it through to Andy Carroll clean through on his left hand side you expect him to score there but he draws a good save out of the goalkeeper and we live to fight another day but they came on the attack again a lot of men back this time though and I was a little bit wary not to give away a penalty you can see me running up to the man but not necessarily putting a challenge in I just wanted to get in the way because I didn't want to put a foot in ended up losing a penalty so Andy Carroll onto his right foot here which you always want to do but he punishes me for it he is clearly just as good on his right foot as he is on his left and that makes it West Ham United 1 Cambridge United nil very much against the run of the game in this particular encounter and unfortunately we were going to get one more chance to get ourselves back on level terms and Ranty wastes it. How many times this season have we seen our new South African striker bury those but that was a woeful finish unfortunately and we lose the game 1-0 at home against West Ham so our chances are still alive in the Capital One Cup semi-finals unfortunately a defeat in the league to back that up but we are still in a very strong position when it comes to Barclays Premier League and I'll show you the league table after we've had a look at some transfer options as you can see here we're just rejecting another couple of offers for Tekelo Ranty clearly that miss didn't put off any potential suitors and the bids are still coming in thick and fast for him but we've moved all of our money into the wage budget as you can see there in the uh, in the top right I've actually moved a little bit across to offer a couple of players um, an extra contract and obviously they have a little signing on fee bonus so I had to alter it slightly but uh, I'm having a look at this shortlist here. obviously we're looking at some pre-contract players now almost everybody on this list is available on pre-contract for next season we've got Jose Maria Jimenez John Anthony Brooks as well we are looking for a centre-back also perhaps looking for a young centre-back to bring in for the time being to try and fill the spot left by the outgoing Salah Solomon either Tiavi Walonga or uh, the other youngster there, Zaldivia, will be the one that I bring in. I am definitely bringing in one of those. Thinking of bringing in Aaron Cresswell well, as well at left back. Connor Cody is perhaps one of my backup options. But uh, Nzuzi Toko looks really good for 71 rated. Pause the video and have a look at his stats. They look fantastic for a CDM. Not really too sure why he's only 71 rated. Alvaro Vidio looks very good as well. Obviously, we used him in at uh, PSV in the stream career mode. Uh, Nascimento and... Uh, James Ward-Prowse were available on pre-contracts. They've since signed new contracts. So, uh, unfortunately, I uh, may have to just hold off on those. But I would be interested in signing them next season for a fee. So, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, this guy, Kadlic, looks very good as well. If you have a look at his stats. So, potentially, we could bring him in. Or Iosi Perez as well. We've got £90,000 to spend when it comes to wage budgets. So, I can either go all out and buy or try and sign two of the players that are on about forty grand a week. Or I can try and sign two or three players players that are on about 30 grand a week because I could maybe get one that's on 40 one that's on 30 and then uh, Toko was on 20 grand a week so I could maybe bring him in as well and that would add up to the 90 that we have at our disposal so it's a decision that we've got to make over the next few days and uh, obviously we'll uh, round out the transfer window either in tomorrow's episode or the episode after on Sunday but that will bring today's video to a close thank you very much for watching drop the video a like if you enjoy subscribe if you haven't already as you can see we are still top of the table only by four points though but everybody's played 22 games so still in a strong position looking for a European spot if we can grab it by the end of this particular year obviously 16 games still to go in the English Premier League but that is all for now thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time